Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for checking out another episode of Uncensored Tacticals Podcast. So I have mentored quite a few people to help them get hired at law enforcement agencies. Uh, and this episode mainly is going to be about, um, mainly is going to be focused towards that audience. Uh, but if you have any interest in law enforcement or if you're in law enforcement, or if you just want to share a drink with me and hang out for an hour, you're also welcomed. So the topic is going to be the differences between smaller and medium and gigantic law enforcement agencies uh, by way of being employed by them and what the pros and cons are for each. So if you have any thoughts or comments on this topic that I missed or that you want to add, a good place for that is either our Instagram post for this article or over at our Discord channel. You can go to uncensoredtactical.com and click on the contact tab and find our Discord link. That Discord is a chat app and a voice app, and it's what we're recording live on right now for the audience. And here we go. Okay, I hate that I have to do a disclaimer, but here we go. It's called uncensored. That means we I hope that it's pretty obvious that we're occasionally going to use a bad word and make an adult reference. All right, what else do we got? Um, a disclaimer for, for this episode. So with law enforcement, like I tell everybody on almost every episode and article, every city and county and state and federal agency has some similarities when it comes to law enforcement. And every fucking single one of them does things different, too. Uh, I have a lot of experience with Florida, so I'll be mainly referring to things about Florida. And obviously, it'll be different around the country, but that's where we're going to start with. Um, so what is next after this that I fuck up every fucking time? All right, what are we drinking? Unfortunately, ladies and gentlemen, tonight it is not uh, tons of alcohol. It is a coconut water because I'm going to be doing some exercise after this. And let's start with how I divide up the sizes of the agency. So what makes a small agency? What makes a huge agency? Let me take a sip of my healthy drink. Blah. Okay, so here's the way I define it. A small law enforcement agency. Are you able, maybe you don't have it today, but are you able to memorize the name of every single employee? Okay, so... If you work with like less than 100 officers and you're talking like less than 50 admin people, is it reasonable that after working there for a year or two, you'll know every person's name at the agency and you'll have seen their face? So that's a small department. There are departments out there with like 12 and 15 guys. Those are definitely small. I'd say under 100 sworn, like 80 cops um, that are officers with like, you know, 20, 30, 40, even 100 admin people. That to me is still small. That's small enough that you'll see your chief's face and you'll know who your captain is. And even if you don't work for them, they'll know your name. So a small agency is, are you on a first name basis with people? And can you memorize people's names? I, I usually say that's about a hundred or less, give or take. So what is a medium agency for me for this episode for how we're going to explain it? A medium episode, uh, episode a medium agency uh, that I did. Uh, that I define here is, is it possible that someone's going to show up for backup for you that you've never met? Okay, so now we're talking like 300 to 1,000 people. So probably closer to 500 to 1,000. Um, the numbers aren't really important. It's the feel of the agency that's important. So I worked on a squad of about mm, 10 to 12 guys when I was doing my uh, county sheriff's office job. And I knew, of course, I knew every single person on my 10 person squad. I also knew every single person on the afternoon shift that overlapped with us. And I knew every single person on the morning shift, even though I only saw them for one hour for the overlap in the morning. 
Um, so that's like 30 people. Of course I knew all 30 of them. Uh, but there were times when we had overtime or we had like special units that would show up on a call or detectives that would show up on a call and I'd be like, who the fuck is that? Of course I was only there for a few years, but even within those first few years, there were still people I had no fucking clue who they were. Um, so is it possible that someone will show up as backup who you never met before? Not does it happen every day, not is it automatically going to happen, so... Are there going to be people that you've never met? Yeah. So that's give or take the thousand person mark and up to like maybe, yeah, maybe towards a thousand. So a huge agency, how do I define that? If you have a thousand people, can you be considered a huge agency? Well, in some ways, yeah. But for me, a huge agency is also about the people and the relationship. Can you go your whole career and not have physically even seen half of the people you work with? So if you spent 20 years working for an agency and you've only physically seen like half of those people that's gigantic where it's a huge agency so a medium-sized agency kind of has a lot of wiggle room for me when i explain it to people um that's why i try not to get caught up in the numbers but huge is uh here's another example of huge i like to use for the relationship do you have to mail in a form to request something mail it to an office that you've never fucking heard of or you've never been to or you don't know how to get to Okay, so a medium-sized agency, you might go one or two or three years without seeing every face, but at least if they're like, hey, go pick up this gear, you'll know where to pick it up, and you'll at least, you'll at least know that the office exists and how to get there. So that's like, that's medium. I know where I'm going. I know who I'm talking to. Even if I've never met them, oh, yeah, that's right. It's the office around the corner. All right, got it. So huge is just a monolithic bureaucracy. So you become, by far, you're a number and not a person. So small, medium, large. So let's move on to what are the pros and cons for small, medium, and large agencies when it comes to the topic of hiring. So I talk about hiring a lot. Um, I'm not going to get off on a rabbit trail because I'm very passionate about how that system is broken, but the hiring process. And like I said, I know a lot about Florida. Um, it will be different in every state. And of course, there are exceptions. Um, but let's talk about smaller agencies. It's often easier to get hired at a smaller agency. So where I'm from in, in the state of Florida, it's tough to get your name in the hat and to go through the fucking meat grinder for these medium and big size agencies. Those are where the big pay is. Those are where the big opportunities are. So you have just a hiring season with a flock of people. So there's a lot of competition, and the weeding out process is usually just a, again, it's a numbers game for both the medium and the large agencies. They have a physical fitness test where they're hoping that like out of those several thousand applicants, we can wipe half of them off the table. Great. What's the next step? Uh, physical from your doctor, medical checkup. Great. Let's wipe some more people off. Uh, psychological, lie detector. Great. Let's knock that stack down. Background. Let's look at the packets, and if they have a typo, throw it out. So... Often, even if you're a quality applicant, it's very easy to get weeded out in a huge agency when you're trying to get hired. Now, people might be saying, well, what if 100 people apply for two spots in a small agency? Yeah, that happens. But if you want to get hired and you put in the time and you're not a complete waste, it's often really easy to get into that top 10 and to make it to an interview. Um, and with small agencies, what I've seen personally is their hiring processes can be faster and... Um, I was doing some research for this episode with a buddy of mine who worked at both a medium-sized one and a small department, and he said definitely a smaller department. They didn't even follow the hiring guidelines that a medium department did. So there were steps in the process. They were like, yeah, we don't do that here. We're just, you come meet us, we do this, you're in. So if you want to get hired as a cop, one of the pieces of advice I tell people all the time is get hired somewhere and get your badge activated and get experience and start your clean record where you don't get in any trouble. So one of the good ways to do that with hiring is a small agency. Um, let's move on to one of the most glaring differences that I use uh, to describe the differences between small, medium, and large agencies. So for me, again, it's not really about the numbers, but it's about um, the environment for delineating small, medium, and large. So uh, special teams is always a hot topic. And so many people that want to get into law enforcement, they don't want to do it 
just to get a badge. Usually, if you ask them, oh, you want to be a cop? Cool. What do you want to do? They're like, I want to be on SWAT. Uh, it's so common, right? Or, uh, I saw these horse guys riding horses once, and I was like, that'd be so cool. Or often guys are like, I want to be a canine guy. Okay, great. Pros and cons for a small agency with special teams. One of the pros, if you take politics out of it, because we're going to talk about politics later, one of the pros at a small agency for special teams, if they only have like two or three canine spots, or one or two, whatever, if you're a fucking shit-hot performer and you work your ass off, it is hard to go unnoticed. Your team members will know it. Your sergeants will know it. Your lieutenants will know it. Your chief will probably see your name come across his desk quite a few times if you're a, if you're a great performer at a small agency. So the pro is they'll know who you are. And when a spot opens up, if you play the game right and you work your ass off and it's undeniable, you put yourself in a good position to get that spot. The bad thing about special teams for a small agency is there might only be one spot and you might get one guy that stays there for 10 fucking years um, an agency I'm familiar with in Florida they had I think I think only two and maybe three canine spots but they had maybe somewhere between 100 and 200 sworn officers and only two or three canine spots so if each of those guys because a lot of people love that job if you're one of those three guys and you stay an average of five to 10 years in that job and some people retire as a canine in some agencies, if you're spending between five and 10 years, you're looking at maybe waiting three or four or five years until even one spot opens up. So that's a problem with a small agency is it takes time for those spots to open up. The good news is if you're a performer, people will know it taking politics aside. Cause I know that's a problem too. Okay, so how do I delineate? Ah, I kind of skipped a skip. How do I delineate between the three? One is a small agency won't have special teams. They all they borrow from other places, or it's very limited. Okay, medium agency, you have most of the teams. You'll have a helicopter or an air air asset. You'll have a dive team with like one or two people, maybe, or even three or four or five, whatever. But you'll have something. You'll have a response team, whether it's SWAT or SRT or whatever you call it. Uh, you'll have a motorcycle unit. You'll have bicycle cops. So you'll have enough people in what I call a medium-sized agency. You'll have enough people at the agency and enough funding that you can find a specialty unit that you want. Okay, so it's it's no longer limited to, oh, shit, we don't have that. Now it's, even if it's, well, there's not a lot of openings, it's, well, at least it's there. So a medium agency is when you start getting into those agencies that have a division of special teams and they have most of those special types of jobs. All right, um, a huge ass agency is the monolithic bureaucracy. So NYPD, right, or a federal agency, like and that's where it's unlimited, where you can find those niche markets where not only are you a detective, not only are you a violent crimes detective, but you're a violent crimes detective for the Northwest and especially region, specifically with burglaries and children. And so you you get real in, in deep. So it's kind of like, where the numbers stop being a police department and you start being an agency of bureaucracy where you have unlimited funding and those options are popping up left and right and you're flying different places and traveling to get here and there and training. And so if you want, if you know that you want your career to be really niche market, like if, if you like learning those weird kind of niche areas and you like specialty training and you like, flying all over the country for training, go to a huge agency. That'll probably fit you well. If you like the area that you're in and you think, oh, I want to be on SWAT and that's really all I want. Okay, great. Maybe a middle, middle-sized agency. If you just like the feel of a small agency or you just can't get hired anywhere else, or if you grew up in the same house and want to die in the same house, okay, yeah, small agency might fit you great. Cool. So special teams is a, is a really big delineator between small, medium, and large and if you know that you want special teams, make you know your decision might weigh on that. All right, uh, this is for the job. So things you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. This is small, medium, large agencies for using resources and your types of assets that you have. Um, this one's kind of unique. In a small agency, while you might not have a ton of resources and a ton of assets. One of the really interesting pros to that is you 
do a lot of different things and you wear a lot of different hats. So um, I had a mentor of mine. He said, he said in 25 or 27 years of law enforcement, he worked at a small agency. Um, over time, it started with less than 100 officers and got up to around 200. He said, in my career, I did things I never fucking thought I would have done. And he said, and having that experience of starting a case on patrol and then working it kind of as a detective wearing that hat and then doing follow-ups and then calling the judge and doing the paperwork and showing up in court and handling my case and setting up this and that and, you know, turning informants over. He said he did things that he never would have done even at a huge agency because he followed so much of that trail through his career that you have to do different things to get it done in a small department because you don't have special units. You just have to do it. Um, at a medium agency, doing things on the job, it's interesting because you'll often get a higher volume of calls if you are in the right sector. And you'll work a lot of murders, and you'll work a lot of stabbings, and you'll work a lot of deaths, and you'll work a lot of shootings. But you might not work the whole thing. So that was kind of, the, I was in like a medium-sized agency where I responded to shootings all the fucking time. And I even went to, you know, triple murder, mass murder, people running around the county shooting each other. So I went there on scene, but within a couple minutes, the detectives got there and they went, we got it. So while I could say on my resume, sure, I was responded to murders and worked those cases. Well, I worked it. I went there, I secured the scene, took photos, took statements. And uh, that was it. Detectives took over. That would, that would be the end of my report. And this detective took over. Boom. So at a smaller agency, you do everything. Or you can. There are exceptions. But at a smaller agency, you're more likely to follow that whole case through. Um, another thing about using resources is things like the special teams. will refer back to that. So a smaller agency might not show up on a call and say, hey, call the canines and call a helicopter. And do." you might just have to work it with what you got. At a medium-sized agency and above, it's very common. Okay, we got a burglary. Great. Is the helicopter up? Oh, yeah, it's already up. Great. Send them my way. Uh, how many canines have we got? We got two, and they're both about equal distance. Great. Send them both. So you start managing that scene, and you, you're the one in charge of those resources and those assets, so you get very comfortable handling that multitasking for those all those different units. So you become, even as a very low rank or very low tenure at an agency, you become that on-scene commander and you're making tactical decisions for a bunch of people, which is a really cool skill set. But like I said, even at smaller agencies, it doesn't mean doesn't mean you're less skilled or less capable. It just means you do things different. So the differences between small, medium, and large for using resources. At a smaller one, you are the resource, which is a great skill set. At the larger ones, you use a lot of resources, but you don't work the whole case. All right. Uh, I'm sure there's more there. Maybe we'll go back to it at the end when I start doing my kind of loosen up and rant area jurisdiction sizes okay so cool note jurisdictional sizes and the sizes of agencies aren't necessarily correlational with city versus county versus state versus fed so you could work for a small federal agency and the city of nypd could have a bigger agency than you so you could work for like the city of miami like miami pd or uh Los Angeles or something like that. It's a city. It's a city PD. And the county in that area or adjacent to might be smaller. I know um, I know in Florida, this, the bigger metro cities and some of the more active counties are really, I mean, they're just different colors, same people doing the same things. Um, so places like Miami, Jacksonville, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, um, they're they're about the same in size and scope as the counties that surround them with the same number of people roughly with the same almost the same jurisdictional area of course the cities are usually within the counties but i mean it's it's so it's so hard to tell the difference between the two for day-to-day -day operations um, and i'm sure that's very different in different states so the jurisdictional sizes for a small one it's really cool and really unique to be part of a city or a town or whatever you want to call the area at its smallest level, to know as many people in that area as possible, to know them well, and to know how things work in your area. And it, and they'll stay the same for a long time, and you learn how to handle that. That's a really, really cool thing to have an officer in your area that you're like, yeah, he's been here fucking 50 years. He knows everybody. He knows everything. So you can become an asset in a small city like that. 
in a medium sized agency, your jurisdictional size, sometimes that geographical area that you cover, you can have worked in that agency for a number of years, five years, 10 years, and there's still roads that you've never even driven on, depending on the, depending on the size of the city and the county. And the title city county doesn't really matter because like I said, a huge city like Miami, you can work there for 10 years or you can work a county somewhere else that's smaller and you, you can know that county really well if the size is small. So I like to say small, medium, and large agency. I don't really, for this episode, I won't really be saying city, county, state much. So for a medium-sized agency with a medium-sized jurisdictional area, um, you could you can end up getting lost there. Um, but if you kind of have the inkling, or if you're already in law enforcement and you're looking for a change, this is something to consider. So if you're at a tiny agency and you kind of just feel like you want to spread those wings and fly, you know, like a peacock, um, might want to go to a county or a state or even federal. There, there's a ton of roads in my county I've never even heard of, let alone driven on. So another cool thing about jurisdictional size is you can work different types of policing within the same agency. So that's, you don't often get that chance in a city department. You have the same types of crimes, no matter what unit you're on, you're dealing with the same people in the same area from the same place with the same experiences. Not that that's bad. It's just different. Um, kind of hammer that one a little bit. All right. Um, what do we got next? The mission changes. Okay. We kind of just briefly touched on that. So I know in Florida, our, we have state troopers is what we have here. And, a lot of people from up north, especially the northeast, they say, like, they're like, oh, wow, you know, why don't, why don't you uh, try to get hired as a statey? I'm like, well, obviously, you've never been to Florida. So in Florida, they call them FHP, Florida Highway Patrol. They are state troopers. And they have, in my opinion, I'm not saying the people are bad people. I think they have the most boring job. And I, I'm pretty sure they're one of the lowest paid in the state. And they have um, the jurisdiction of the types of crimes that they handle. Of, of course, they have statewide crime jurisdiction but they don't get involved in all different types of crimes what they do is they drive up and down the highways they write a ton of traffic tickets and they work traffic fatalities on the highway and in the cities like that's it so if you want to be a ticket writer and a highway driver you would work for the state of florida as a highway trooper um they just they don't have uh what's the word i'm looking for they don't have a huge important what they call like a status so you wouldn't show up and be like Oh, I'm a state trooper. And everyone doesn't go, oh, I'm weak in the knees. That's so cool. They go, oh, great. You write lots of tickets. Super cool. Like, like I said, it's not a personal thing. It's not like they're bad people. Some of them are fantastic officers, but they're limited in their jurisdictional scope. So all they do is highways and deaths on the highway for the most part. I know if there's any of you guys listening, you're going to be screaming at your stereos right now. Not saying you're not good at what you do. I'm just saying the job is very limited. So different types of mission for different areas. If you're in a city, if you're in a big city like New York City, you're going to expect to deal with those urban crimes. If you're in a rural county, you're going to expect to deal with rural crimes. Um, I was lucky enough that the agency I worked had kind of a nice split of both. Um, I never wanted to work rural, but we we even had a, uh, a, uh, what do you call it, a link on our desktop that was for uh, what we call the cow book, C-O-W, cow. So I'm in training and I'm like, I keep I keep hearing people get on the radio and they're like, yeah, I can check the cow book. I'm like, is that, what does that acronym stand for? My trainer was like, yeah, that's that's not an acronym, buddy. It's, that's a book of cows. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And he's like, switch to this channel. So I switched the channel and someone, someone was calling in. Yeah, the tag on this cow says uh, 38762. Too. Can you look up the owner for that? And I'm like, holy shit, we got cops that do that here. So some agencies, if you know that you really want to, if you know inside that you need to switch shit up every once in a while and just completely reinvent yourself, maybe find an agency that has a big urban area and a big rural area. Um, that was that was really unique for me. I grew up in a city, so I wasn't used to things like that. Uh, what else we got for mission changes? Um, like I said, in Florida. The counties and the cities are usually hard to differentiate. They do the same type of cop work. They handle the same amount of calls usually. All right. Uh, If you're looking, if you are trying to get into law enforcement, for the most part, if you're looking at a regular kind of urban suburban city, 
that type of policing is usually the type of stuff you see on TV. You show up, you get in your police car, you drive around, you catch a bad guy, done. Cool. Usually. So, uh, you know what? Here's another cool, <laughs> another really cool. I was looking for maybe a different law enforcement job somewhere else. Um, and this would have been really important to me if I was getting back into that career field, but I'm not. Um, it's a really nice thing when you're talking about jurisdiction. So most of the cities in Florida um, and the counties, they're not, they're not one and the same. So it's not it's not like Florida City is in Florida County and they both are this, this big rectangle and they're right on top of each other and they're the same. What happens is it's like a checkerboard. So the outer rim of the whole checkerboard is the county. And then some of the white ones are the city. And then it's kind of like a blob in the middle. And then there's like a, like a little blob on the outside, little blob here. So one of the problems with that was if you're a city officer, you don't often have jurisdiction outside of those little areas that you're in. So you could drive one city block and see a crime and you would, you know, call the county and say, hey, we got a crime going on here. I'll detain the people, but you got to come work it. Or you can drive another block and boom, that's your city. And where I worked, it was like literally like in some areas, it was like a checkerboard. You'd be driving down the street and go, that apartment complex is owned by the county. Next one, that apartment complex is owned by the city. So as a city cop, you have to know, hey, I got a crime going on. Am I in my jurisdiction or not? So that gets to be kind of a pain in the ass. The county was nice because you wore your big boy hat and you went anywhere within the county bounds. For the most part, there's exceptions, of course, but for the most part, I drove right through the city, right into my zone, right into their zone. I worked with them a lot if they were shorthanded. Um, If I was in their jurisdiction working on something, I called them for backup. So it was cool that I never had to worry about, am I in jurisdiction or not? Because for me to drive out of my jurisdiction, I would have had to uh, drove over an hour. So I would know it. Um, For the state guys... Another thing to consider for jurisdiction, if you're going outside of a county area into like a state agency or federal, it's really cool because you often, often, not always, but often get a bigger big boy title. You get a big boy hat. You opt, not always, but often is a bigger paycheck. You get, uh, you're moving around for training. So you're driving and making cool trips to go this and do this and that. That comes with a price. So as soon as you get outside that reach of, I can drive to work. The problem is they might move you across your state. And they might move you across the country. So just be aware that that comes with a price. Some people really want that big boy status to be a fed. Or they want, in some states, troopers, like the stateies, are hot shit. So they want that high, that tippy top, super gold badge. But if you have a family and you've ha- if you have kids, um, your agency might say that they care about you. But they only care about you until it's not convenient anymore. So if they need you somewhere else, you pack your ass up and move. And that sucks. A lot of people leave the military to go into law enforcement. Shocker. Um, and a lot of them are fucking sick of moving around. And some of them make that mistake of they work for a state agency and they go, fuck, I got to move again. So be aware of that. All right. So the mission changes. All right. Politics. I said we were going to get into that. Let's talk about that. So I think a good blanket statement here would be the politics are fucking everywhere in law enforcement. You just have different flavors of it wherever you go. Um, so just like what you see on TV with the politics of, you know, all those fucking NYPD shows, you have a huge, huge top heavy administration And what they say goes, and when they change it, it changes, and that can have a lot of effect on the way you do your job. It can. Here's the flip side, depending on the agency. At the agency I was at with with about 500 officers or deputies or sworn, whatever you want to call it, it wasn't often that anyone above my sergeant or lieutenant woke up and said, I'm going to change the way they do things. Often, we did our job. And if the people and the brass way above us wanted to change something, it often took some time for them to fill it out and sign it and pass it around and get it approved and send it to legal. And maybe they'd say, okay, you can no longer wear shiny boots. They have to be darkened boots. Okay, great. Well, there wasn't often a decision on a daily basis that changed the way we did our job in the larger agencies. Not often. There's exceptions. Duh, I'm sick of saying that. Okay. In smaller agencies, I never worked for what I would call a small agency, but... I've had some smaller units in the Coast Guard. 
uh, that I've experienced this with. And a buddy of mine who I was talking to from a small agency, he said, the politics are still there. And he said, you might think it's great that you can see your chief and he'll know who you are. He's like, but here's the problem. You show up to briefing in the morning and your sergeant walks in, who you work for, and your couple of guys you work with are there. And the sergeant goes, we're doing things this way. Put the bag in slot A. And then he walks out of the room and your lieutenant walks in. And he goes, hey guys, uh, oh no, put that bag in slot B. And then the captain walks in and goes, oh, hey, guys, no, 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 take that bag, put it back in slot A. And you're like, what the fuck? So at a smaller agency, there's definitely politics. There's definitely administrative issues or issues with the brass that you have to worry about. But they affect you so much faster because your, your chief can walk right up to your traffic call. If the chief's got 12 guys, he probably knows what they're all up to, I would hope. So if he shows up to your traffic stop or shows up to your crime and he goes, yep, change it, do it this way. Then it becomes a pissing contest between your sergeant and your captain and your chief, if you're a small agency. And that all has almost an immediate effect on you. So something I didn't even know when he, my buddy was telling me that, I'm like, oh shit, good point. Uh, so the, the politics are everywhere. Um, but there, there's a different flavor of it. So here's another cool thing, speaking of military and law enforcement and politics. So for a gigantic agency, just like the military... Um, this is a big pro for politics. If you fucking hate your supervisor, just wait a year. One or both of you will be moved. So in a huge-ass agency, if you want some longevity and you're like, man, I'm going to fucking quit if I have to work for this guy another day, take a deep breath. Either he's going to leave or you're going to leave because there's thousands and thousands of positions you can work, both of you guys, and there's a limited time you can stay here. Go somewhere else. And often at those bigger agencies, it's not even always, especially at a huge agency, the training options come up all the time. Even if you don't like what, what, the, what the position is, if you just got to get away at a larger agency, it's so much easier to do that. If you're less than 100 guys or less than 200 guys and you're like, man, my fucking sergeant sucks. I've only been working for him for two months. It might be another 10 months before you can even apply to a special unit or to apply to change shifts. And then maybe there's only... You know, four shifts if they're on the A-B schedule. So if you don't like three of your possible shift commanders, you might be fucked. So that's one of the big pros for politics for a huge agency. If you don't like it, it'll change. Either you'll move or your supervisor will move or whoever it is, you'll go somewhere else. And there's places you can disappear where you'll, where you'll never see those people again. Okay. Um... The last bullet point I have here before I start opening it up to the Discord members and the ranting and getting loose. The uh, last one I have here is pay. So it's not always small agency, medium agency, large agency, small pay, medium pay, large pay. This one is not necessarily correlational to that. There's a good chance if your agency only has 10 guys, you're probably not the highest paid in the state. Good chance. But there's also a chance that you can be working for a medium-sized agency. I was at a very big uh, county agency for my area. Um, and we were, I think, the year before I got hired, I looked up their pay. And I think out of the area for sizable um, comparison departments, we were like 11th out of 13. Like one being the highest paid. We were not comparable. Um, I think by the time I got hired, we moved up to like 8 or 7 or 6, something like that. But it definitely wasn't the top and there are some smaller agencies around the hundred person mark that pay quite well um so if you're gonna get into the job i would get like i said in the beginning i would get hired somewhere but also be aware that if you intend on staying at this job for 20 or 30 years that pay while it might not be as important on day one and year one it's going to be really important down the line if you want to have a family and live your life and not be paycheck to paycheck um, so just be aware, small, medium, large for size of agency doesn't mean a size of paycheck. Sometimes it, there's some really weird niches in there and exceptions. So let me kind of press pause here and check these discord comments. Where's the pause button? All right. So we're at about 33 ish minutes. I'm going to take another sip of my healthy coconut water. Yeah, I wish it were beer, but I got some. I'm actually doing some sprints tonight as soon as I get off the mic here. I don't want to throw up beer outside. So let's talk real quick about the hiring again. Um, 
I beat this to death because people don't listen. So a lot of people that, that talk to me about wanting to get hired, they go, oh, I really want to work at agency A. And I'm like, great. How's that going? They're like, well, they didn't accept me. Fuck. I just, I don't know what I'm going to do. And I go, did you apply anywhere else? And they go, well, I don't want to work anywhere else. And I go, well, you need a paycheck. And I know stories of guys that have wanted to work at a specific agency and they can't get hired. So they get hired somewhere else. They get up, they go through their year of probation. They have a clean record. They get tons of experience and they're getting a paycheck. They're building their skill sets and they apply at the agency they want to and they get turned down. And then they apply the next year and then they get turned down and then they apply the next year and they get turned down all the while they're getting promotions. They're getting great training, great experience. They apply again and they get accepted and they roll that retirement right over to the new agency and then they're super happy forever and ever. Right? So my first piece of advice for trying to get hired in law enforcement is get hired somewhere. And then once you're in, it's so much easier to get a job when you have a job. Um, the pay is important. It's, I mean, it's, you know what? Another reason I tell people get hired somewhere is because you learn what to look for. So you might not know when you get to your agency, oh, shit, I didn't know that, you know, their policy says this. So the next agency you go to might have a different policy that you like. Well, here's one example of that. Um, I had a friend of mine who worked at an agency that said, like, they wrote a, your own fucking manual for after 9-11. They said, Oh, great. Everyone gets a rifle now, or some people get a rifle now. Okay. They wrote a fucking rifle manual that said roughly, you can only, you could take it out of your car whenever you want, but it's got to be in your trunk and it can't be loaded. And when you take it out, you have to say on the radio that you're taking it out. And then, you know, as soon as you get back up, yada, 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 put it back in your trunk, write a report that's only about taking your rifle out. It's not a crime report. It's just, I am documenting that I took my rifle out. He's like, he's like, it makes me not want to carry it. Okay. I knew to look for that ahead of time for policy. So we're on a rant about agencies getting hired now. Okay. So I don't get off track. I am allowed to get off track. We're at the end. Okay. So I knew to look out for that in my agency. Thankfully, one of the questions I asked during, during my, uh, I did a couple ride alongs with them before I decided to put in my bid in the hat. So I said, Hey, uh, you know, you guys all have rifles or shotguns or what's the deal? And he's like, yeah, he's like, uh, our policy is pretty sweet, man. He's like, we, uh, if we get out of our car and we feel like taking the rifle out, we take it out. And I'm like, yeah, but do you have to like fill out a report or anything? He's like, what the fuck are you talking? He's like, no, he's like, we're cops. We carry guns. He's like, if we need the rifle, we take the rifle out. If we don't need it anymore, we put it away. We carry on. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so great. Not that I love walking around with a rifle, but if I need it, I don't want to have to have that internal monologue about, do I really want to do the report? Oh, oh, too late. I'm dead. So things like that are good to look at. And if you work for an agency and you don't like those policies, the good news is you have the rest of your life to try and go get hired somewhere else. And you can take your time making that decision while you have a paycheck and while you have a clean record and while you're getting experience. Um, I never really cared much about the retirement programs that different agencies have. Some people, that's all they worry about. Um, especially once you start climbing that ladder and especially if you don't have a very strong skill set and you're just a warm body. I was always concerned about living my life and being happy and being able to do my job. And I kind of always had the plan to fund my own retirement, however that is. Uh, but I mean, some people, I, I just, I couldn't make myself do it. I couldn't pick to be in a career or be in a specific agency that I didn't love just because of retirement. I feel like that would be a really long 20 or 30 years. Um, that, but be aware some departments, I know in Florida, a lot of departments used to be a 20 year retirement summer or 25 and you can buy back military time. But my agency, I think went up to a 30 year retirement when I was there. So that is definitely life changing and life altering knowing that fuck man, nine years ago, I could have been retired already if I worked at a different agency. So if you're going to get hired, get hired somewhere and then start paying attention to that because it's easier to switch that first or second year. And a lot of times if you can't get hired at the agency you want and you wait and you try and get hired again and you can't and you wait, that certification goes away or your value goes away or you're getting older. So if you want to get a job, you can get a job. And there's some shitty, shitty, shitty applicants that get hired somewhere. So I try not to harp too much about if you're a shitty candidate. Look, if you want to be in this career and you're a good person 
and you do want to help people, and you don't want to just trample on people, I'd be happy to give you whatever advice I can. Shoot me an email on the contact form on uncensoredtactical.com. I'd be happy to mentor you and give you a little bit of info and some guidance if you want it. If you want to get hired, you can almost guarantee that you can get hired somewhere. Um, and if you're in law enforcement, hopefully this was a good talk for you to kind of get some new perspective on what some of the pros and cons might be for the agency that you work for. And just another reminder of how to enjoy your job a little better. All right, well, we're not getting too far off the rails tonight. Uh, hopefully that was some cool stuff. Please, I love the feedback and the uh, interaction, so jump on the Discord. It's a cool place with lots of cool people and a ton of law enforcement officers amongst other people. Um, follow me on the Instagram. Follow me on my YouTube channel. That's a great way to see the new content. And go over to the website. The website's home base, touch home base. So get over there, and there is still a, um, a subscribe button on the website that helps I don't send any spam mail. I've had the website for, I think, over a year, and I sent zero spam emails. When something really big happens, I'll let you know. Um, I am working on a book. It was my goal to have it finished last year. I only got 90% of it done. So this year, I'd like to get 10% more done. And when that comes out, I'm sure I'll send out a huge email and spam you guys. Um, always bring your humor, especially in a law enforcement job. Always use smart tactics, even if you don't need them, especially in a law enforcement job. And I used to say, stay legal, but I think it's more important to, to say, stay moral and do what's right, because they're not always the same thing, especially in law enforcement. Uh, but I try to stay away from the liberty talk. I'm also over on Insurgency Knitting Circle. We talk a lot about liberty and freedom and what that really is and what it's not. Um, so tonight was just about the cop stuff. It wasn't about me getting on a high horse about freedom and liberty, although it's important. So thank you so much for joining me, Discord fam, and uh, everybody else. I hope you enjoy the episode. One of the biggest ways you can help is to share this with your family and friends and to click subscribe and like on all your platforms. I will see you guys on the next one. Bye.